Welcome to this edition of Miles Ahead, and this time we are looking at the Porsche 718 Cayman GT4. Now, bad reviews of this car are as rare as hen's teeth. This car has been incredibly well received by everyone, and um, on first impressions, I can see why. But we'll have a quick look round. Um, so starting price is just over £75,000 now. Unusually for one of these press cars, it hasn't got that many options on it. So the total cost of this one is uh, just a shade under £80,000. Um, so we'll see if that's good value. You get Porsche's naturally aspirated four litre flat six engine. It does 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds. This is the manual and it's got a great gearbox. Um, I do like the Porsche PDK automatic box. I know that's not to everyone's taste, but this as a manual is really good. So anyway, let's have a quick look around it. So this has been murdered out. I've heard it referred to, so it's, everything's done in black. Um, the by Zenon headlights, they're 918 pounds. You get this front splitter with the GT4 uh, logo down there, so you can see that. And you've got the air intakes on the side. Um, you can hear the engine because it's mid-engined. Obviously, the, it is just behind you in the cockpit, so that's quite noisy, but we'll, we'll get to that on the drive along shortly. So as we come round, so it's got the 20 inch, these are Cayman GT4 specific wheels, so they have the GT4 logo rather than the Porsche logo in the middle. Um, the painted, brack, uh, painted black brake calipers, that's 518 quid, and to have these, it's painted in satin black, which is 380 pounds as well. But I mean, it does look good, doesn't it? I mean, it's a, it's a very very handsome car. Um, so as we will come around to the back, so obviously the immediate talking point on this car is this massive great spoiler. Um, I would say that is necessary to keep the downforce there as well as another GT4 logo on the back there and you've got these twin exhausts here as well which um, it does make a really good sound as well. So we'll just have a quick look in the boot while we're here um so there's not heaps of space there's um there's a deep well in the front as well but i mean you, you might get your cricket bag and a bit of shopping in there or if you're going away for the weekend you'd be all right in that as well but anyway let's have a quick look at what it's like inside okay let's take a look inside the cayman gt4 so as we open it up there is an extra bit of storage just in the back here if we can get into that that's quite useful there's one on the other side as well so uh, that's actually you can see get your hand in there it's actually quite deep so um yeah, you can store some extra bits and pieces in there for your weekend away and all that sort of thing um right so we'll climb on inside so you get the uh straps for the door rather than door handles to save weight um not really sure what it is. It just gives it that extra racing feel, doesn't it? Because that's what racing cars have. Uh, so the lights are down there, old-fashioned. Stick the key in there, and um, yeah, we'll start it up so we can have a look at the infotainment system as well. So um, yeah, this is all pretty easy to use actually. It's all, all um, you know, done on buttons and everything else. And you can, I think it's touch screens. Well, I uh, need to do source right. Yeah, try and get to the radio. So yeah, I mean, so that's you know mix of touchscreen and buttons which is good um, and then all your other buttons down here as well so um, you know so we control the temperature at this level heated seats down there obviously a manual gearbox which is nice um, and then yeah because there aren't that many options on this car so there's not an abundance of buttons here so the auto blip function so that um, just basically rev matching so on the downshifts and that's actually really really good um, of course if you do want to do a bit of heel and toe you can turn that off that opens the exhaust valves up a bit um, I don't know if that will come through on the audio on here but it does immediately get a just a little bit lower so yeah um, and you can turn your traction control and all that off now we come to the driving position so a steering wheel devoid of buttons a bit of a rarity in this day and age um, so cruise controls down here obviously your indicators and all that sort of thing and windscreen wipers through there and you get the old analog dials as well which I really quite like um, in the Porsches so yeah tip to the old school and the one on the right that comes up with your sat nav and stuff when you're moving along too um, so yeah these seats very comfortable I must say there's a bit of extra storage behind you there there's that other storage compartment on the other side that I mentioned and yeah the, the door bins are a decent enough size you can get bits and pieces in there and then of course you've got the old school glove box as well USB charger in there as well and uh, there's another little cubby hole here and that also has a USB charger in there as well. So all in all, yes, yeah, it's, it's very nice and it's very driver focused. The seating position is nice and low. As you can see, you get a good vantage point of the road and all that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is, it's, a, it's a really nice cabin, very focused. Alcantara headlining, um, yeah, a bit, a bit of, sort of plasticky leather type stuff down here and then a bit more Alcantara on the door lines and Alcantara line steering wheel as well. So yeah, all in all, um, yes, yeah, so it's, 
quite a nice place to be and it's, it's quite a comfortable cabin as well um so yeah you know, very easy to use very easy to get used to oh and the other thing yeah the cup holders are in here so i nearly forgot to mention them so you get you do get two cup holders so uh you know that's something um although yeah you would um not want to press the setting button to put that in sport which firms up the ride everything gets a bit jiggly so if you're having a coffee uh definitely make sure that is in the softer setting anyway let's get along to drive along so what's the porsche cayman gt4 like to drive we'll start with the engine note and i'm sure you'll agree that that sounds fantastic that four litre flat six naturally aspirated sounds really really good so um we're just pulling out this village and then i will open it up a little bit because we get to a 60 mile an hour zone um and i mean it really does it sounds fantastic so anyway, here we go Lines at 8,000 rpm. Now, the problem is, um, as I'm sure you've heard elsewhere, that the second gear is quite long, so you can actually apparently get up to 85 miles an hour in second gear, which um, you're going to lose your license pretty quickly um, doing that. But you get good power delivery through the rest of the gears as well. Um, you know, it's you get decent power delivery going second to third, and it's good, much smoother when once you're into fourth. So, you know, you don't just stick it in second and leave it, it's you know, it's still a very drivable car. And I do really like the manual gearbox, as you said, in the walk around. I think, um, yeah, that's that's good. Um, the, I mean, the PDK option, I think it's £2,000. Uh, I mean, do, do you need it? There is a, there is a question there, because this is so much fun. It's so engaging to drive um, with, the, with the manual box. But, you know, whatever takes your fancy. Um, the PDK, we had that on the Porsche Macan Turbo um, a few videos back. I'll check that out on the channel. And, yeah, I mean, that was, that was really, really good. The manual shifts are great on that. And I'm sure it'd suit the profile of this car really well. Um, but the manual box is good, yeah, it's good, it's good fun. It's nice to have the have the stick there to uh, shift through the gears in. So, obviously this car's fantastic to drive. It's rear wheel drive, but there's nothing too intimidating about it. It's, it's very manageable. When you do push it through the corners, you do get a little bit of tail end slide when you want it. And that's, you know, that's really nice actually. It's all very well controlled. You always feel in control and this car very much puts you front and center of the experience. You're you're the one doing the work. You're the one controlling things. And that's, that's quite a nice experience to have. Um, you know, that's what you want from a car like this. Um, so, I mean, we mentioned at the top, you know, is this, does it represent good value? And yeah, I mean, I think it does. I mean, you'd have to spend a lot more money to get the step change up. I mean, I really like the steering in this car, for example, when you can really feel where it is on the road. It's very nice and precise, and there's a real good weight to the steering. The setup of it's really, really nice. Um, to get better, um, I think, you know, you're looking at the sort of hydraulic setup you get in a McLaren. Um, obviously, I can't compare this to a McLaren. It's, you know, if you're getting, going for that sort of car, you're spending at least another £100,000 on top. So, uh, it's, I mean, you know, the fact that you're comparing the steering to that says a lot. Because, I mean, I think um, the steering in the McLaren, I drove a 620R um, a few weeks ago, and the steering in that was the best I've ever experienced. I mean, this isn't as good as that, but I mean, it's getting on for that. And I mean, for an £80,000 car, I mean, that's, that is high praise of steering. This is really, really good, really impressive. And the car's really agile as well. I mean, you can just place it so well through corners and there's plenty of run. It produces about 414 brake horsepower. It's 440 horsepower. Um, so yeah, I think an old money BHP that's about 414. And it's enough. I mean, it's quick without being terrifyingly quick, which is good. You feel like you could use this. Now I can imagine if you're sort of new to sports cars, you could jump in this and you'd find it really easy to use. And also if you've been driving sports cars your whole life and you're looking for thrills and spills, this will deliver and it'll deliver everything in between as well. I mean, it's a really, really impressive car. I mean, I am by no means a driving expert. I don't have racing licenses or anything like that. Um, you know, you feel like a good driver driving this and you know, that's, that's really what you're after, isn't it? You know, you want to get behind the wheel of a car like this and it make you feel good. And you know, this car absolutely delivers this. So, I mean, we'll look at things from a slightly different angle from a lifestyle perspective. The ride quality is really comfortable. It's got the two modes between normal and sport for the uh, dampers. And, you know, in sport, it really does firm things up. I mean, it is a little bit too much at times, but I'm sure if you were taking it on track day, which you probably would want to because you bought a Cayman GT4, you know, it would really excel in that. Get it all, you know, get the stiffer setting in there and it'd be brilliant. Um, but for, for, you know, for UK 
okay roads, normal is fine, but it is a really distinct setting. On some cars you change the setting and you don't really notice what's happened, but in this, you know, you really do notice the change, which is great. I think that's I think that's really good. Um, you know, as we sort of walk around the boots, not the biggest, but you do get a bit of space in the front. So if you were going away for a weekend, then yeah, you could take this cross country. I don't see why not. Um, it's got 65 litre fuel tanks, so the range when we got in it, it was full, said 330 miles. I mean, we pushed it a little bit, so obviously you used a bit more juice than you would if you were just, you know, running up. I don't know if you were doing, say, London to Leeds or something, you could do that quite comfortably in this. I mean, it is a bit noisy because the engine is just there, but I mean, <laughs> it's to be expected. I mean, this car is laser focused on delivering that supreme driver experience, and that's what it does. And it just. It's fantastic. I mean, that's another problem. You are going to get very used to doing that. You will want to open it up all the time, and it just it just responds. And I've just been really impressed with the agility. But the ease of access, yeah, like I say, if you're a newbie to the sports car scene or you're a veteran of the sports car scene, this car will not fail to impress. And yeah, for that reason, I mean, I've been I've been blown away by it. It's been everything that I expected, and I was expecting big things. So yeah, this is a really really impressive car enjoyed this video um, if you did like it please hit the like button please subscribe we've got loads more videos coming up uh, we've got an Audi e-tron s we've got a KTM 620 we've got an Aston Martin DBX and an Aston Martin DBS coming as well Ferrari Roma and we've got Polestar 1 as well so um, we're speaking to people about other videos as well so we've got loads of stuff coming up um, I hope you enjoyed this video and yeah please hit subscribe and yeah hopefully see you soon thanks